like the reason why we're here is because we love Nashville. We just don't want the heart of it to die. Mm -hmm. Like that's what's important. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Successfully Unsigned, where we provide professional music advice for unprofessionals. If you like content like this, make sure to let us know down in the comments or on any social media platforms like Instagram, where you can find us at successfully underscore unsigned. Today we have the privilege to sit down with local Nashville country artist, Tegan Stewart, where of course she goes into talking about her music, but among her experiences, also how Nashville has changed over the years. Old Nashville versus new Nashville. Nashville and how she both loves it but also reminisces about the past. Which, by the way, if you feel the same way, you should check out her song, New Nashville. You can find it on all streaming platforms under Tegan Stewart. We also hit on a familiar topic in this episode of musical improv. Sound familiar? If not, then you definitely need to check out our interview with Missy Ecker, who is part of the same musical improv comedy club that Tegan Stewart is. In fact, that's actually how we met. Also, a fun little fact about this interview is Tegan Stewart has been in the background of some movies and shows that you might know or recognize. If you find her, tag us and her in your social media, and the first place you should look is the movie Lemonade Mouth. As always, let us know what you would like to hear next on Successfully Unsigned, who you would like to see interviewed, and how we can help you become a better artist and get your footing in the music industry. Find us on social media platforms at successfully underscore unsigned. You can find us on TikTok at unsigned podcast or on our website at su-podcast.com. And of course, you can listen and watch all of these episodes Episodes on YouTube under Successfully Unsigned, where we would really appreciate it if you hit that like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Let us know where you're listening from and rate us on your favorite streaming platform. Thank you, and we hope that you enjoy this interview as much as we did. Welcome to Successfully Unsigned. We are here today with Tegan Stewart, who uh, is a mutual friend of our friend, Missy Ecker. And uh, Tegan reached out to us a little while ago, and she uh, thankfully was like, hey, uh, are you guys still, like, interested? I was like, yes, come on. Sorry we've been busy. Sorry we've been slacking this summer. But uh, we're actually heading up to, like, the end of our season. So this is exciting that we were able to get you on. Finale. Yes, yes. Uh, It'll be one of our last episodes for this season, so we're excited. Uh, But Tegan... You know, I was doing a lot of research, and um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to, like, talk about your discography and everything. Tegan is Yay. a country artist, and I realized we've only had, I guess, technically, we had Layla and Nick, and Nick is, like, c- country folk. Mm-hmm. Layla is country. So I feel like we've only had two other a country couple. artists, and they were together. Oh, Mike. Yes, that's the other one I was thinking of. Mike is the other country artist. I don't know why I've never thought of doing this, but I felt like this would be perfect timing. <gasps> oh, my God. Um, To bring out my cowboy Yeehaw hat. Yeehaw agenda. Yes. Yes. Literally. <laughs> so, Tegan is a country artist, and um, I'll go ahead and do, like, my little outfit. Uh, she had she has a Reveal. song called Tequila and Lime that just came out. Yes. She'll be Famously. performing it later. And um, I so I wore my lime green pants, and I was like, okay... Lemonade mouth, lemon, lime, Mm. lemon socks. And then I was wearing the t-shirt, and what did you tell me? That I was an extra in Lemonade Mouth. Which is the most amazing fun fact ever. I'm in that. Like, so... Like, hardly, but I'm in it. (laughs) Go stream her music and look up her profile, follow her on Instagram. We'll get all the plugs and everything. Um, And then go watch Lemonade Mouth and see if you can find her. So, is, what specific I'm, scene? I'm, I'm in the gym scene. Okay. Like, the class assembly where the principal is saying his that thing. The principal is mean. And then Haley <laughs> Kyoko is like, I'm I'm there. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna, I, mean, I need to rewatch <laughs> it now and, like, look for you. And I'm going to post it on Instagram. I don't recognize me. But, yeah, please, please do. Yeah, I guess that was a long time it ago. Was, it was, like, 10 years ago, at least. At least. I think probably more than that. Yeah, because I think it. I was in high school. That's wild. So, yeah. Okay, so other than Lemonade Mouth, <laughs> which I would say, like, if it was, like, if I was an extra in a decom, peak of my existence. But <laughs> take us through the rest of your musical journey beyond that and what y- you were like growing up. Uh, you grew up in Albuquerque, yes. right? Okay. And then you moved to California for college yep. and eventually end up here in Nashville. Yes. But before all of that, what was your musical journey like? Did you do music? Growing up as a kid, how did you get, you know, to be doing extras and films, things like that? Yeah, I started piano lessons. I can't play piano, just okay. So 
Good to know. But I started piano lessons when I was like five or six because my brother was doing it. And I remember, I wish now that I had stuck with it and like learned piano, but (laughs) um, I just, as like a really young kid, I was like, this is boring. I want to sing. Yeah. Um, And so I basically forced that piano teacher to like become my first vocal coach (laughs) and they were like, okay, sure. So I was in vocal lessons from when I was six to 18, like the whole time. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. It shows though. You have a really good voice. Thank you. You have a really good voice. Um, I definitely feel like I don't have a lot of natural talent. Like I feel like everything I can do with my voice, I like clawed for because I didn't have a vibrato till I was like 16 or 17. Like I didn't have a really wide range like I just feel like I love singing so much and I was okay but I was never great but I was always in lessons Mm -hmm. so um I started performing when I was like in third grade so I was always in like a singing dancing group that had regular performances that was like not at school I was always in one of those and so by the time I was basically in high school I'd done a lot of performing and so then in high school um and I wasn't in musical theater just because I went to Catholic school and their theater department was really underfunded and it was like not cool. It was like oh, sad. Oh man. And I hate that. But that's the reason I like maybe would have been a musical theater girly. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you were a theater kid because we'll we'll get into it later, but uh <laughs> you have a musical improv background, yes. which is how you know Missy. Yeah. I'm assuming. Um and so that, is, yeah. that I was like, okay, she has to be a theater kid, right? But that's crazy. Yeah, I I did. There was a high school um, that just did incredible productions. And I did two in the summer with them. And like that. So I've I've like been part of a couple musicals. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, that's the the only reason I didn't do musical theater. So I was on dance team competitively. I was doing too much. Okay, but but that's still really cool. I yeah, I was on dance team. I did competitive model UN in high school and college, which is like a really wow. nerdy way that I got to like travel the world. Like yeah. we went to Rome and Turkey and stuff That's crazy. and like are doing our little social dominance nerd competition. <laughs> but um yeah, so I guess like I said, by the time I was in high school, I had just started learning to play guitar. My brother really encouraged me. He was like, if you don't want to be a karaoke singer, you need to pick up a guitar and learn that and okay. i was like okay that's which, a, that's kind of a good point actually yeah that, that's a good i've never thought of that but yeah i guess if you're a singer you probably should know how to play at least one instrument yeah and he we had a really interesting dynamic he's three years older than me and so kind of close in age and he loves like punk alternative hard rock weird stuff too mm-hmm. and i always loved kind of mainstream country and pop Mm -hmm. and so we really clashed on music in like a big ideological way like it would be like your music is trash for these five reasons (laughs) and we were so adversarial about music which both of us regret we both wish we could have like been mature and not done that but i feel like it kind of dug my heels into like loving country even though okay i'm not you know from the south i don't i kind of don't get some of those references but I love like the sass and the storytelling. And we yes. also grew up like my mom loves country music. So she would buy this ticket, the summer ticket to the amphitheater where every single country concert would come to. Like it'd be like one summer is like Brad Paisley, Keith Urban, Carrie Underwood. Like it was everybody. That's so cool. So you've like seen all the greats. I've, yeah, like it, like definitely like I saw everybody because then all the openers were all the people who are the next big thing yes and it was so inspiring That's crazy. and my mom would be like i think you could do that like you Period. could open Good. for them thank you mom yeah thank you mom uh can i ask were there any like openers that you saw that like years down the road you were able like after they got big you were able to say yeah i saw them live like back in 2007 before anyone really knew who they were <sighs> Well, the biggest one is not country. It's we saw Justin Bieber in 2015 and Post Malone was his opener. Really? Yeah. I never knew Post yeah. Malone opened for him. Yeah. That's crazy. That it is. It's like it's crazy to think now. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. That's probably crazy. Well. Um, the the other thing that I I love uh, about what you were saying. Well, first, I love that your brother and you had this like kind of butting heads about music. Even though I saw years ago, someone said that country is farm emo and i was like you know the more i think about it the more i think that's kind of true and 
I, I've gotten really into like the emo pop punk scene here in Nashville. And so I'm like learning a lot more like emo music. And then, you know, obviously you're around a lot of country music in Nashville. And I start looking at I'm like, there's so many similarities or there's so many artists who have gone cu- from country to emo or vice versa. Or I've heard a lot of people take country songs and do emo covers. Yeah, like, those Why are does really it work successful. So well? But I think it works so well because... Y'all are talking about the same exact it's, thing. There, it's drama <laughs> yes. in like two different yes, ways. It's just, like different singing accent. Yeah. So really, your different, your brother yeah. and you now can come together and be like, you know what? Yeah. We were both right this yes. whole time. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> You're like, mm, no, not true. It, it's more just like I. St- I. We will never truly enjoy what the other person listens That's to. That's fair. But we can now be like. Oh, we have some overlaps where we can appreciate okay. this thing. Like, we still have things we can talk about in overlap, yeah. but yeah, we. I I do also that. really appreciate what you're saying toward the beginning of, you know, I didn't I didn't necessarily have natural talent because uh, I think it could be very easy to come on here and a just not even say that or b just pretend that you do and to talk about how you you were like no I from six years old I've been working toward this and practicing and like the idea of practice makes perfect and it does not happen overnight and there are some people who do just have the natural talent like myself mm-hmm. but <laughs> some again, of us in the room like i just, mm-hmm. i don't sing for y'all because you know i don't want <laughs> to make everyone, everyone feel yeah bad. exactly it's- with my <laughs> natural raw talent but other than that you know for the most part it takes a lot of hard work and we say even for the best of singers go to our anastasia episode who anastasia is an amazing singer uh, Anastasia Elliott, and she says that she still takes vocal lessons, and she's been doing vocal yeah, lessons. Yeah, I need to go she, back. She I need to go back. I, I restarted like a, a like a kind of like this little like pitch boot camp, like ten yeah. minutes a day thing, and I've oh, been doing yeah. that for like a little over a week now, and already like felt like it's yes because tighten me those up. techniques yeah. and practice and all of these things are really good. So I think that's so important. So good on you for um, doing that and like being open to saying that so after like high school and stuff what did you when you moved to california what did you pursue in college nothing music related okay i actually toured belmont and i was like "Mm, no fair (laughs) i well i think i really did and this is part of i feel like i'm i'm never i'm always like kind of two hands in different worlds yeah that i was always like a very academic kid like i feel like so many musician stories are like None of that was for me, and I knew music was the only option, and I, like, d- never felt that way. Like, I was mm-hmm. like, I love a lot of things that I've studied. I'm, I like reading about all, like, I read nonfiction for fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I listen to news podcasts for fun. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not typical. And then kind of makes you feel like you question, like, well, if I'm interested in other things, am I, like, allowed to do music seriously? Because everybody else is like, I could never do anything else. Yeah. And that's a fair point. So um, I knew I didn't want to go to music school, partly because as even though it helps, like you don't have to. And I kind of wanted to explore, like, what would this be like? And actually, I auditioned for American Idol when I was the summer before I went to college. And that really? was the farthest I ever gotten that, which still admittedly is enough. But like I did the bus tour in Albuquerque, if you remember those, they mm-hmm. would go to different cities with this big bus and they would pick. So I was like one of. 15 people out of like 2000 got picked in Albuquerque. Wow. Okay. That, I mean, that's really <laughs> impressive. Thank you. And then like, so then all of, we went to Kansas city and they cut together all the footage from three days in Kansas city to look like one. So they were still making cuts every day with producers and you know, they don't tell you until you get there, but I had to wear the same outfit for three days, do my hair and makeup the same way. And, um, you know, and then at the end, you're going to do the celebrity judges. And I remember I was so worried about looking ditzy or stupid or being. And then I was kind of in my head of like, if this works out, this is my dream. And I think this is what I want to do after college. But I really did want to go to college. And all of that was in my head. And then they open the doors and it's a blacked out ballroom with like a, you know, like a, just a little square that's lit up. And it's JLo, Keith Urban and Harry Connick Jr., and I, sh- I played guitar and I shouldn't have because I was a little more unconfident. And I saw Keith Urban watching my hands 
and like he's like the so good on guitar and I I did like okay but I couldn't banter like I I was giving them nothing like I was just and then and I think Keith Urban was like do you write songs I was like yeah and he was like do you are you performing I was like yeah and he was like okay like, good for you like keep doing that it's gonna be a no but like you know have a nice wow. life kind of thing and then I was like oh, I blew it but I was a little relieved because I really wanted to go to this college and kind of just see you what life was going to be like. Wow. So so when you say like this is the best horse, so this didn't air. Anywhere? I am on four seconds where I'm kind of teary and I'm like, it's sad when you mess or whatever, because you kind of missed your shot. And like my hair looks really great. But that okay. I'm just on for four seconds. So lim- y'all so- <laughs> got homework to do. Lemonade mouth and American <laughs> Idol. What season? Seconds. Oh, my God. I don't know what number, See, but it would have aired. In January of 2015. Okay. Y'all got homework 2015. to do. Go find it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I want to go look for it now. <laughs> that's crazy, though. I mean, honestly, though, you got a lot further. Like, I've known Which a few is, people yeah, who have true. auditioned for American yeah. Idol, but they never get to the, like, celebrity judges. I never got that far again. So, <laughs> I mean, hey, but that's still really cool. Would you ever yeah. do it again? Um, may, Probably not, just because yeah. I have since then, and I've never gotten as far. Yeah. But um, also, like, the bus tour thing was fun, and that was in person, and so many of the first auditions now, you still have to, like, send a video. Yeah, Um, that's true. But I loved college. I didn't do that much related to music. Um, I studied international relations and literature, so econ classes, Mm -hmm. international politics, things like that. I did... um, take their money and go to Nashville for two summers to do internships. I was doing internships, but they, nobody cared that I was there. Like they were, I interned for a PR company that was awful. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, I kind of interned at the country music hall of fame and like no one would ever have known I was there kind of thing. But like I was in Nashville, I was um, with these two sisters who one of them uh, kind of taught me, songwriting and guitar their name is uh l and they are now um maggie rogers and lord's guitarist so really cool <laughs> really cool i mean you have so many fun facts i do i, I i'm, so I'm realizing it now that i'm talking to you i'm <laughs> like i just have weird the things that have happened but but like that was a really and they came out their band name it was a sister band um called poema and they came out with an ep in 2015 like hit million stream like easy wow. like they're, they're so good and then they broke up as a sister band and that's when l kind of went on their own way and then became and then the other sister um is a watercolor painter like full-time like she's so cool oh so that's really they, cool. they like introduced me to nashville like okay. i've i was like a part of their friend group they took me everywhere mm-hmm. it was like all of my first times like being in severe park and getting jenny's ice cream and going to centennial mm-hmm. and it was all with them which was cool so before all of that did you always like dream of moving to nashville or was it yes okay i wanted to go to vanderbilt just to to still do college but be in nashville and i didn't get into vanderbilt and i'm glad that didn't happen because i would have been in nashville but i would have just felt guilty about not like doing more when mm-hmm. It just wasn't the time for that yet, mm-hmm. you know. So. so what was it about Nashville that, like, drew you to the city before you even visited? Country music. Country music. Yeah. Purely. Okay. That was, yep. Okay. Yeah. And so are any of the rest of your family musical? Um, aside from my brother, my parents are definitely not. They enjoy music. Yeah. Not musical. Um, both of my uncles play guitar. Um, one of them um, has, like, kind of self-produced albums and stuff. And then my cousin is also a producer in an indie band. So kind of, but that de- that's definitely not where I learned music, but definitely a supportive mm-hmm. family okay. for music. When I graduated, I definitely had this like, like mini crisis point where all of my friends had already kind of lined up jobs and they were all in consulting and investment banking and high powered things. They were going to make a lot of money. It was prestigious. It was awesome. And I was kind of like on the precipice of like, I could do that. I feel the pull of like wanting to do like the prestigious thing and like making this kind of money and having this like awesome swanky apartment. 
and just like knowing that choosing Nashville and choosing to do music, like I was about to like choose to be poor and probably, and yep. you know, I worked at a restaurant and like, you know, kind of was just like, what am I doing? Is this like a huge mistake? And I definitely cried, but at the end of it, I was like, I still want to do that. That's mm-hmm. still. And so I feel like with all of these other interests and things, music kind of just edged everything else out. I was like, yeah. this thing's just a little bit ahead of everything else to me. I mean, they always say, like, pick pick your heart. Like, yeah. OK, yeah, you can be super, super successful and have all this like money or whatever. But a maybe you're going to be working really, really, really hard on something you don't really care about. Yeah, you have or no life. You can work really, really hard on music, something you're so passionate about. And you're going to be struggling with, you know, money, finances, whatever. But you get to do what you love in the end which i mean money comes and goes yeah but if you're not passionate about life then and i kept imagining point? like if i had done that then i would just be wasting x number more years before i quit and then moved and yeah. i was like i don't want to do that yeah yeah we just had uh someone on her name is julia adrian literally last week and she went from like corporate law and she was like i I know I just want to do music. So she quit and it's like, yeah, corporate law is probably somewhere where like you could make a lot of money, but she's like, no music, music is it. And she, she was the same way. She's like, I don't want to be years and years and years and years into it. And then be yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to quit anyway. So I, I think good on you for making that brave decision. So how much, how much longer after college did you move? I had decided before I graduated. So I moved in the fall after I graduated, which wow. is 2018. So I wow. just kind of had the summer, okay. was at home, traveled a little bit, and then was like, all right, now we're moving. And that was from California all the way to over here. Right? I mean, I, I mean, like I went home for the summer okay. in New Mexico. Okay. And then, yes. Gotcha. Wow. So yeah, I didn't I mean, drive. that's a big move. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it didn't feel like a big move because then it was like the third time I was there. Except since I had two summers in Nashville, it felt less like a big move. Okay. That's good. Well, I'm glad you're like acclimated to it and everything. Uh, what were like some of your influences? Um, yeah, definitely. Miranda Lambert was huge. Like mm-hmm. when I heard Gunpowder and Lead, I was like, that's it. Like, mm-hmm. that is awesome. <laughs> like I had like two of her albums. Um, Rascal Flats. I'm definitely always into like I, I can't be into the music if I don't love that person's voice. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I wish that wasn't the case because there's really great music that's not as like vocal. Sen- but if that's fair, but if I'm if I don't love listening to the sound of their voice, like I'm just not going to be that's fair as into it. But um, I obsessed over trying to sound like Carrie Underwood, which I'm never going to sound like. But like that was obsessive. And that's kind mm-hmm. of actually how I learned a lot of like songwriters names and producer names was like reading all the line notes and like lady mm. a albums and carrie mm-hmm. underwood albums mm-hmm. and just like getting to know all the producer and songwriter names of course big taylor swift fan from mm-hmm. day one had the f- debut album um that's so cool did you never saw taylor swift in albuquerque no i don't no? think that's yeah crazy. i actually never saw her in concert till reputation i don't know how wow yeah um any like non-country influences yeah i <laughs> I really liked like a few like I kind of <laughs> all the like angsty like 90s rock stuff I really liked okay. and kind of like Daughtry rock like I liked Matchbox 20 a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, everything flew out the window in my head. I'm trying to think of like a sing- Jewel. Oh, um, yeah. Alanis Morissette. Yes, absolutely. Love it's her. Kind of all the. OK, so I hope you take this as a compliment because for me it's a compliment. But I was hearing like some Ariana in there. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't like I'm obsessed with Ariana Grande. Really? I'm so sorry. I didn't bring that up. Me as. too. No, I have I have like three, four merch sweatshirts when I went to I've been to like three of her concerts. The um Thank you next, like Holt. I uh-huh. I wore like I dressed up as her. Like I had I the ponytail so and the God is a woman sweatshirt. I'll send you a picture. I love that. And so the boots. Much. Like I dressed up like her for Halloween, like twice. As you should. Like I'm no, I'm obsessed with Ariana Grande. Uh, yeah, I been, can't believe I didn't say I've that. I've been Arianator since day one. Yeah. Um 
and like was a, a victorious is one of my favorite shows of all time. So like, of course, I loved her on there. And then her first album is like one of my favorite albums of all time, which I, I love all her albums. I like know where I was when I heard the way the for the first time. Like As I, you should. Like I was As driving home from high school, like on like Coors in Albuquerque, like this big road, and I was just like, like the, no, I. I, I'm so happy to hear that because I was like that to me is a compliment but I know some people wouldn't love that but there was definitely like some like high notes in some of your songs where I was like that's a little like Ariana no, note yes, <laughs> I, yes I learned to whistle I like I, really? can, I can whistle because I yeah are you able to like just do it or um, I, I don't want to like pressure you and be like do it but <clears throat> Not great. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's it, I mean, I can, just for being on the spot, <laughs> that's actually pretty impressive. I always tried to do it when I was a kid, but surprisingly, could not. It's that like was the one, the, the one natural talent you know? I didn't have. <laughs> uh, okay, well, on that note, I feel like Ariana <laughs> is a good one to end on. Uh, so we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about your discography. Hey, thank you once again for listening to Successfully Unsigned. I would like to take a moment during this break to remind you to visit our website at su-podcast.com to view all of the newest and latest content that we put out. Also, do us a huge favor and hit like and subscribe on this YouTube video and like and rate us on your favorite streaming platform. Each one of those things helps us out tremendously. We would love to hear your thoughts on what artists we should have on next, what content we should cover, what kind of topics we should discuss, and any tips and tricks you might have in the music industry. Thank you for being one of our favorite listeners and enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to Successfully Unsigned. We are here with Tegan Stewart and Tegan has quite the discography dating all the way back to 2018, which is uh, when you were deciding to move. Yes. So when you released Water Wings, Water Wings, wow, that's actually harder to say than I thought it was. <laughs> um, so what... What, uh, this decision to move a were you in nashville yet at this point i, or no? I recorded it in nashville in the summer okay before my senior year oh okay. and i shot the music video in my college town my senior year okay partly funded by my college oh very cool because okay I, I tried to apply it to some like leadership fund and they were like no but here's a check and i was oh. like okay <laughs> okay well thanks um yeah okay so it was that just kind of what was sort of the push or was it kind of what you were talking about of what you were like, this is what I want to do? Um, I I feel like if you go back through my discography, you'll see the glow up. Like you'll see I have a huge growth curve because Water Wings isn't that amazing of a song. It's not that amazing of a recording, but I'm very proud of it because it's a song that has heart. My mom was the one who I had done a little work tape of it. And that song's really emotional. It's about um a friend in high school who committed suicide and she would be like you should do something with that song mm -hmm. like i i feel like i feel something every like i listen to your mm -hmm. demo of that and i feel like my mom is stays proud but she stays pretty honest with me and so i was like okay that's kind of the the best thing i have now so i'm gonna go with that and um i had also done an ep in 2015 that i took down oh okay so that happened and then was no more just because okay. the production quality wasn't there. Gotcha. But that was kind of my very first recording experience. But then for Water Wings, I had this music video idea and that was the first time I had ever attempted to do a music video or anything like that. And kind of everyone around me was like, Ooh, hope, hope you don't make it like a very cringe homemade, like, cause which is kind of a fair fear, but, um, the videographer, the way that came together was one of my favorite like musical experiences because the videographer was someone who had graduated from one of the like consortium colleges. And he was like, I love this song. I'll do this for cheap. I want to be part of this. The editor who did a great job was a student who was one of his first editing projects who wow. did great. Um, and then uh, a girl named Devin helps me, my friend, um, who's now a costume designer for Marvelous Miss Maisel and a bunch of other cool projects. That's so cool. She helped me find outfits. She did my makeup like she mm -hmm. was like my wardrobe and makeup. And then uh, another friend who now works at Adobe created that logo, like the water wings. Oh, like okay. she made that 
okay. in Adobe. That's so cool. So it was a huge like group effort, yeah. and I really loved and like the drone shot is just we yeah, just like, I could, saw the, like a drone in there. I was doing, we just I went rented to behind a drone the from the co- like it's free to rent it at college. Like college just like has so many resources and yeah. like free stuff you could do. We've definitely used it for this podcast. Some. <laughs> so like the music video of that was like I'm I'm still so proud of that music yeah. video. And so then, but, you know, the song itself is like, is it kind of the best representation of like my artistry or songwriting? No, but like it was a really cool stepping stone. And then that was kind of, you know, one of my first times, like being serious about trying Mm -hmm. to promote a song and putting visuals together. And then um, and then I moved here. (laughs) And of course, when you move here, you immediately start writing with other people kind of seeing what's out there, like leveling up your writing pretty quickly because everyone else is so amazing. And Write You a Love Song was a song I wrote with someone two weeks after moving here. And he was a Belmont student. I was like 22. He was 21. And he was like, well, I'll just do it. Let's just demo it. Let's just demo the song. I was like, sure, whatever. And he's like, I'll just produce it for free. I'm trying to get like my chops up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, sure. Um And then we eventually hired out like a season mixer to like finish it off. But that song, again, not as much like calculated thought behind all of the workings, but it was just like, this is a thing we created. We got it. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of how the first few releases of my discography are. Well, I mean, that song, I like I can't write you a love song because you're not in love with me. I was like, oh, (laughs) ow. Yeah. Ow. Yes. But um, I I actually do want to go back to Water Wings because no I okay full disclosure you know when I'm doing this research for a lot of artists I always start from the beginning because I do want to see kind of that growth and like mm-hmm. how this artist has progressed from start to finish especially if they have music that you know goes back five plus years yeah and so um when. Yeah, when I listen to it, like, I'm not expecting much, but I actually did enjoy Water Wings. And when I, I listened to it a few times, you know, watching the music video and behind the scenes, all that. And so I realized I was like, oh, there's like lyrics in there. Like, I started realizing, like, this is about this is about someone she knows. And then I saw at the end of the music video um, dedicated to Carlos, which I'm assuming is your friend. Yes. And so I was like, oh, OK, so I agree. I like I agree with your mom, like. Maybe it's not your best representation of mm-hmm. yourself, but like I think there is beauty in that song and beauty in showing like, hey, this is something that I am proud of because it means so much to me. Like that yeah. is something that is really hard to go through. And like in a lot of ways, what better way to go through that than through music? So Yeah, yeah. It didn't have the yeah, kind of the I don't know. I don't know a better way to say it than like the commercialized. Like it's not polished and it's not. Yeah. But like you could tell it had the heart. Yes. Of, yes. Of it. I also loved in the music video you did uh, High School Musical 2 bet on it splash in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so oh that pool. OK that pool is at Pomona College which is like next to my college. And, like, you're not supposed to go in there. And I was just, like, in a sequin dress, like, in the pool. And when you notice, like, the light sequences, like, you know, it was, like, uh, pink pink lights. Um, the lights were, it does, like, a light show every 5 p.m. or whatever. So it was doing this light show. And I had, like, a lot better shots in the other lighting section. But then, like, when we were doing our first passes of editing, we realized, like, oh, this looks weird. Like, we have to pick the shot that's in the pink because otherwise it looks too weird and and it it totally is like a bet on us <laughs> which hey, i love it, I, loved. I loved it yeah but i and i love that's something i just love so much about honestly music videos in particular which i have another one in the works which i'm oh. i'm gonna was gonna bring up later okay um with the the show and tell oh okay so, okay so i won't talk about it now okay. but um But I really love music videos and all the thought and the kind of like just like the things that go into them. And then Mm -hmm. the stories behind how it all came together, like Mm -hmm. shooting water wings in a day. Yeah. Yeah. And like we're next to Mount Baldy in Southern California. So it's like that drive up that the mountain shot, the river, like all of that was like 15 minutes away from like the town and the drone shot. Like it was all right there. I I think. 
I think like for someone's first music video, like it's done really well. Thank you. I, I really do. I and I'm not just saying that. Like I wouldn't say that if I didn't really feel that way. Um, if you love music videos, this is gonna be a shameless plug for an artist that we yeah. love. Yeah. Uh, Anastasia Elliott. We had a whole. She is like the queen of DIY music videos. Amazing. Um, she's kind of more like 80s rock sort yeah. of sound, but check her music videos out because you will be like, how in the world is this done by an independent artist? I'm excited. Um, okay. I also want to talk about figure eight because <laughs> A. The forgotten step. I can't believe you're bringing up figure eight. <laughs> well, because I was like, okay, there's a feature on it, which I didn't notice any of your other songs had features. Maybe there was. I, there may have been one other one that I missed. Um, I don't think so. And it, like, had more of, like, kind of a Latin influence. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to, like, talk about that. Like, what brought this together? Yeah. Um, I have a friend, Shannon. Her artist name is Shay XV. Mm-hmm. And she was one of the first people I met when I moved to Nashville. And she's a um, pianist, songwriter. Um, but she didn't really move to Nashville for music, necessarily. She also has moved away since. Okay. Um, but we were best friends and... She had this idea and it's kind of similar to the other songs. It's like, well, let's write it. Sure, let's do it. Let's finish it. And she um, was producing it. And you're, it was kind of just like, let's just do this thing. And um, and we did. And, you know, we didn't put as, you know, money or promos. Kind of just like, we're just going to do this thing and it's going to be fun. We're going to release it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we recorded the vocals in her apartment in Brentwood. Like it was just, everything hey. was just in her apartment. And then we just sent it to a mixer and yeah, that song is fun because yeah, it doesn't kind of match anything. Um, but like, I love the drama of it and the story of it. And we had a blast making the cover art because it's a broken wine glass and a heel. And we, threw so much wine on her floor and we broke like a couple glasses and then in the end it doesn't even it's not even like a splash on the ground like it's just but yeah that was um but i i actually i studied abroad in chile and i'm fluent in spanish but from learning it so it's not like a native language to me but i can fully speak spanish but like Definitely a huge dream would be to be able to tour in South America. Oh, that'd be so cool. So, that'd be so cool. Do you know Chase Matthew? He's like... I've heard of that name. Okay, he's a huge country artist now. We almost did a duet together. Like, I have his old email and, like, our first drafts of this. Mm-hmm. But he um, recently released, like, a Latin crossover, like, pop country song. And I was like, that's that's it. That's what I, I want to do that someday. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I think that'd be so cool. Are you, what, why did you learn Spanish? Oh, uh, I am Hispanic. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's what you're, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> ask. To ask. I'm yeah. Hispanic too. Yeah. So, uh, I, like, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 we always love getting, getting yeah, other Hispanics yeah, on my here. My whole mom side is from New Mexico f- okay. for like 400 years. Oh, like, wow. Like, we know the name of the guy who came from Portugal and Spain. Oh like, my it's goodness. It's really crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I also have family in New Mexico. I've never been there. I need to go. But My grandma probably knows your family. Like, she, honestly, kno- she knows everybody. Seriously. I'm s- it's so serious. Okay, I'm going to ask, during our break, I'm going to ask you okay. about my grandpa. and Because he has, like, yeah. 14 siblings. So, like, there's a oh good chance. Oh, my God, we're related, you Wait, guys. wait, wait. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wait, what if we were? That would be we, like, insane. Be. <laughs> this, this is crazy. Okay, we're... we're <laughs> Y'all, we're going to find out if we're cousins. Um, <laughs> okay, so I want to move on to your EP, Taste of My Heartbreak. Yeah. Because I really enjoyed it. What I really enjoyed was your commentary. Because... A single person listened to the, the commentary album. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I'm so, First off, I, that makes I, me like, so happy. I, I'm, every artist, like you were saying, you're like, oh, my God, it's figure eight. The song no one knows yeah. about. I'm like, yeah, I know all the deep cuts. I'm telling yeah. you, I do my research. Yes. But the commentary. So I love album commentaries, and I wish more artists did them. Yes. So if you do another album or anything, please do, do another one. Do one. Okay, I will listen, listen to it. To it. I will it. listen to it 100%. Okay. Sarah Bareilles used to have one for the Blessed Unrest, which is one of my favorite albums, and disappeared off the internet. Not on Spotify. <gasps> that like I used sucks. to have it saved on there, and I've you like can't find I've it. looked it up before, 
Can't find it on YouTube. Can't find it on Google. Nothing. If you can't find it on YouTube, it's gone. Literally. So if anyone knows where the Blessed Unrest oh album He's commentary is, please tell me because especially her commentary about the song Manhattan. She's like, I literally was crying while recording this. And I'm like, I need to just hear her talk about it again. Um, but there's an, like, I've listened to a few others before. So I really, really appreciate that you did that. And I wish more artists did that. So thank you for, and, and not that you always have to talk about right. what you wrote about, but I think it's really cool that you did it for this EP because this whole EP is a breakup EP. Mm-hmm. And for you to be so open and vulnerable about your experience like you pointed out specific parts um where you literally said like you know this person I broke up with like literally asked me back and so I don't know I like what made you want to be so vulnerable with the writing what made you want to make this whole breakup EP did the person you broke up with like or however you ended it did they hear it like are you okay talking about it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna, and it, and it lives on and all the, but this, <laughs> this was definitely like the first, I mean, obviously the first like full project I did that was cohesive, that m- was meant to be together instead of just like, oh, I wrote another song. Let's yeah. put it together. Right. I mean, a few things kind of came together that way, but I definitely wanted to do the commentary because I knew there was no other way people would know that this EP is the arc of the breakup Mm -hmm. and that it that's that's why it's ordered that way Mm -hmm. and um yeah so this was my college boyfriend we dated for three and a half years so almost my entire college experience wow and we went to europe together the summer afterwards and there was always that little bit of like but i'm going to nashville and he wants to stay in la kind of avoided that and then when it came down to it I I was kind of in a place where I was like, I'm ready to try long distance and sort of see what happens. Obviously, in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm never going to leave Nashville, so you'd have to come. And he's probably thinking, why no, I don't want to be. But I was a little more open to, like, let's do the long distance thing. And it's probably much better that he said, no, I don't think we should, because... I, neither of us were that close to wanting to move to the other mm-hmm, place, mm-hmm. but we broke up like two days before I packed up and moved. Like we were finalizing our breakup, wow. like in the U-Haul on the way to Nashville. Wow. And that was obviously it was so painful because we were best friends. Like it was one of those things that was like, you know, and I don't in hindsight, you know, it's like, I don't think we would have, been the right people for each other because otherwise we would be and we would have been but it was still so painful that like that was kind of the only reason and you shared a long time with this which i really like too is that you say in your album commentary like this is a lot of times breakup songs or albums are either like either go one way of like i am so depressed or i am just you know who cares like yeah like yeah i'm so much better than you blah 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 and you like take the nuance of it all of like no like I you know I am hurt I'm sad but also I'm angry and I'm gonna lash out but also like yeah yeah, at the end of the day like I lost this person and they were part of my life and now they're not and how do I move on from that so I really I really enjoyed just the nuance of it all that makes me so happy that's just so (laughs) I love that yay yeah it was it was really good so a few like highlight tracks that I want to talk about and then we're going to take a a quick break again um yeah so so like I mentioned good intentions how you said that he reached back out and kind of was like hey maybe we should try this again it's like all the different emotions that come with that of like hey I just got over this and now you're making it flood all back and oh yeah that's I I really enjoyed that one um you did another music video for Homebody which I I really uh, that was another fun one. Um, how did it kind of compare to Water Wings? Um, I have to say, when I released it, I did have like a party for Homebody, like releasing it mm-hmm. um, for the music video. The biggest difference to me is like Water Wings was so much more of this like collaborative thing where we were all so in it together. Mm-hmm. We cared kind of equally about what we made. Mm-hmm. And Homebody did feel a little more like 
okay, everybody kind of got paid and that was their thing and that's kind of it for them. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, which is just not as fun. But I, you know, that's also a little more of like college versus the right, real world. Right. Everyone's got to kind of live their life and whatever. But Homebody was so awesome because that was like exactly how I pictured it. And sometimes it's scary to have a specific vision because you're like, okay, if it doesn't come out exactly the way I wanted it to, or if I can't communicate that vision, I'm going to be so disappointed. But even like the beginning shots and the cadence of Homebody, like that whole, that was like, oh, it's exactly what I hoped it was going to be. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was a fun one. Uh, I really enjoyed it and how it was designed and everything. Um, okay. We're going to take one more break and then we're going to come back and finish up the CP. Hey guys, what's up? It's DJ Patty G. I hope you guys have been enjoying the show so far. If you want to go find more, go to our website, su-podcast.com. We have lots of cool playlists there, whether it be from artists that we've had on the show or with other independent artists from all over the world. Also, make sure to follow us at successfully underscore unsigned on all of our platforms, as well as unsigned podcast on TikTok. You guys will be our best friend if you go rate us five stars on all platforms. And if you like and subscribe this video, make sure to keep watching so you can see more of our shenanigans and other tomfoolery. Thanks, guys. And this EP came out in 2020, correct? Yes. Which is... Famously. Yeah. Not a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so go check out the EP as, long, as well with the rest of her music. Uh, but it is, uh, also go check out the commentary because it's yeah, really good. Check out the com- Thank you. It's very good. <laughs> and, uh, go check out the homebody music video, the water wings music video. Um, but I also want to talk about date a musician. Ooh. <laughs> Slay. Um, you know, so you wrote this before you'd ever dated a musician, right? Or like you had so, started the process a lot early. Yes. A lot earlier when the first that, songs written. I had the, um... The whole beginning, like, I had a smooth move. I had that whole verse and not a chorus. Okay. Like, from, like, my freshman year of college. So I wasn't, oh, wow. I wasn't writing songs consistently then. Like, I was, but not. I'd hardly written that many songs. <clears throat> so I didn't really have kind of the skills myself to, like, make a chorus out of it. And I, I wrote that song with Autumn Bicey, who's now signed to Sony and like a huge songwriter. Oh, and wow. she was still a Belmont student. And that was our first write together. And I was like, I have this thing. I don't know what to do with. And, you know, she like helped me bang out this chorus that like kind of tied everything together. Mm-hmm. Then everything rolled after that. But and that, you know, it was never going to go, I think, <clears throat> anywhere cool without without a collaborator. Like I didn't know where to take it. Um, even though I had like the hook and the idea and I play that one at live shows a lot. Actually, it's really fun because mm-hmm. each, you know, a lot hear, of people like, probably relate. <laughs> well, and like, the, you know, when you have a band show, it's really fun because then yeah. each musician gets their little solo thing yeah. and they get to like do the licks different every time. And like that one is really, really fun to do live. So I, I play that song probably that and Homebody, like, the most often off the EP okay. live. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, I get the sense of humor and the rebellion in this one. Um, but there is a reason that dating a musician is a stereotype. Yes. And <laughs> can I ask, uh, you? so since then you have dated musicians? And I and I still am. Still am? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it um, works. It, I mean, it works, obviously, for... For some people, but it's it is funny that you play it live in Nashville because I I am sure there are plenty of people who are like, oh man, date a musician. Never, yeah, yeah. Well, so my boyfriend now, um, we have such a cute story of how we met that I really needed a bass player, uh-huh. and I asked. I'm also the other two guys that play with me are um, one's also a comedy friend, and then his roommate or former roommate they're great guys and so i was actually having like a comedy kind of writing session with the guy who's the drummer and he was like well i know a few people if you you're worried about finding a bassist and that guy said no um but he said but i know somebody and that was my boyfriend riley who um had just moved to town like i didn't know that many people and it's nashville and i give people the benefit of the doubt because everyone's really good here so i was like sure whatever he can play <laughs> and just like send him the songs and so 
um, when we first we rehearsed once the day before the show and both of us were kind of like, oh, you're cute. And then we played the show and then that was it. And then the second gig we played, we were like, which was the least you could do, like release show. We were like, oh, well, I'll go out afterwards. And then we started talking and and he was like, I can't be hooking up with the first girl artist that I play for. Like, this is like, I can't be doing this. Like, this is bad. And I was like, I can find a basis anytime. So I don't care. But, I, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but then we went to a John Mayer concert, which like that kind of ended up being our first date. And yeah, ever since then, um, he, he's actually a drummer first. So if that drummer is not available, he'll drum. If he is, he'll play bass. So now... Good on you, girl, for yeah. finding not only a good musician, a drummer. Exactly. Especially. Because <laughs> talk about, like, stereotype and then even more of a stereotype. I know, right? So shout out to shout out yeah. to your man. Shout out to your man but, for being and, one of the good ones. <laughs> and it's, it's great because he's really supportive and we can get into it about music a lot and, like, you know, what we both need to improve and sharing what we know. Like, it's yeah. we can both make music, like, the forefront of our lives. I will say there are so many people who are, like, who are musicians are, like, it's hard when you date a musician because of all the different things in all yeah. that and also, like, musicians, ar yeah. Art artists. Yeah. Just have a certain way about yes. them. But then it's hard not to date a musician because then they just don't get it. Yes. And so um, it... It's, I, I definitely see kind of catch point two there, but uh, I just thought the song was really funny. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, your personality sucks. The uh, gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I can't get away from that song. It's also that wasn't me telling her her no, personality yeah, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like took it. So kind of, no, that song is the only one that I wrote before I came to Nashville. I I'll make it short, but I <laughs> when I was in Chile. Um, uh, did I say this in the commentary? Maybe. I don't remember. And maybe not. Oh, the wilderness trip. I, yeah. Yes. Yes, I went on a wilderness trip when I was abroad, and I went with two people who were on, like, my program, and they left me in the woods for no reason. Like, they were like, we're going to be late to the boat. We got to go. And they, like, wouldn't take the time to, like, look around. Like, we were looking at glaciers and stuff, and they were just like... And it was such a bad hang. It was such a bad vibe. And I actually had to confront them about it afterwards and be like, hey, this whole thing wasn't cool. Um, and then I wrote a song called Your Personality Sucks. And um, that song is fun and funny. And I love the end it's, when you just rant. <laughs> and it's like, I feel like sometimes people, like whether it was my producer, or Riley, or whoever, will kind of be like, that song's cool, but, you know... I don't know, maybe maybe stop playing or whatever. And it keeps coming back because the reaction I get from that song is so strong that I have to keep playing it. Like I yeah. played a show in Michigan, rural Michigan, um, for a Fourth of July festival. And like that song made people buy my merch like in a minute, like they were lined up at the merch table because of that song. Like people went to the ATM to yeah. go take out money because of that song. Well, I, I mean, like you say, everyone everyone knows someone where you're like, I just do not like you. I never will yeah. like you. For me, it's Dale. <laughs> but for <laughs> but no, I actually immediately when I listened to it, I thought of an old coworker of mine. Um, you know who you are. Anyway. <laughs> and it, it was just like, and why are you like this? Yes. And why the, do you get the, to be like what, this? At the end where you say like oh, well, that's just the way they are. No, that's not an excuse. <laughs> literally, that is who I thought of my old coworker because, like, she literally thinks the world it was just crafted for her and she doesn't need to change anything. She literally would be like, you know, I'm selfish and I don't really care. I'm yeah, like, well, that's like, not how you're supposed to be. Right, so like, what, why, are, why is everyone I just wish letting her the best, you be like I wish her the best, I never want to see you again. Yeah. Um, have the people on the wilderness trip heard it or do you even know? I don't think so. I don't okay. think they've followed me. I don't think because I've also told the story enough. If times, you know I them, feel I'll like send them would... the commentary and be like, by the way, this is about you. <laughs> this you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I think it's just so relatable. Or I, I really like it because it it's not about the breakup. Yeah. But a lot of people could see it 
in their breakup. Like, it fits in the right. breakup narrative of, like, okay, either it fits with you because you all, we all know someone like that, or it fits with you because your ex was a terrible person. Yeah. Whatever it works. Um, so, yeah, and then, like I said, good intentions. I really like that one as well. Uh, and just the craziness, like, of someone asking you back. In, a, in like, a serious thoughtful way like it yes. was, which is also why that emotion comes out of the song because i feel like there's a lot of like and you asked for me back and never again and it's like it wasn't mm-hmm. that i was like oh maybe yeah i have to think about it yeah <laughs> man okay so brief intermission for unsay it because you premiered this at third coast comedy club yes. right so third coast comedy club this is how we met you yes technically and missy missy ecker uh, go watch her episode. It's a great one. In the middle of that episode, I find out she did musical improv, and I have, like, a seizure on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I literally... You, you should watch it. I can't... There's, I will. There's part where I I'm like... Wait. I What? Yeah. And she's like, I have never seen anyone have that reaction to musical improv. But yeah, yeah. I had a friend who um, I literally met at a grad party, and I was like, you're so funny. And she's like, well, if you think I'm funny, come to my show Buy tomorrow. Buy a ticket. <laughs> and we did. And she was like, I really didn't expect you to come. Cause she's like, not even my so friends come. So many people are like, I'm going to, I can't wait. Send me the next date. And then they don't come. Yeah. And so, uh, I, the first time we saw you, uh, I'm trying to remember. Do you what? remember what the play was oh, about? No. I don't even know why I'm asking you your terrible memory. Um, oh my goodness. It was about I think you were like one of the main love interests. Oh my god! And it was did a, Missy was and I fall in love? No. It, yes, it was a school. Yeah, that was and a like long time ago. Tony yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did Missy and I fall in love? It wasn't you and Missy. It was okay. another. It was another girl. Which is surprising. Missy it's was like a me teacher. And Missy. Uh, anyway. Okay. Um, it was something about like a school dance. Yeah, it was something yeah. about a school dance. It, it, anyway, so you were—I mean, you were great in it, and like <laughs> I love musical improv. They really enjoyed it too, David and Dale. And so, um, what like brought you to musical improv? I need to hear your story about because I'm obsessed with musical improv. Um, so I did. My parents threw me a great Sweet Sixteen birthday, which they bought out the small black box improv theater in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And so I got to be part of the game, like a birthday girl, like they did a show and I was like a big part of it. That's so cool. And that was like, I was like, Oh, I could do this. I want to do this. So growing up, I was like, I wanted to do improv. It was on my mind. I'd also done some acting classes, Mm -hmm. which is why I was like a couple extras in lemonade mouth Mm -hmm. and whatever. I don't think I loved acting enough to like pursue it, but I was a little in the world. And then in college, I wanted to do improv and there was like one group and they kind of didn't exist. So then when I graduated, and moved to Nashville, I was like, this is like, I need to do this. Like this has mm-hmm. been kind of in the ether on my mind. So I took classes at Third Coast from 2019 to 2021 and 2021 was I just started their musical improv class. And so our group actually moved through two levels together and then stayed together as a group and started putting on shows as off Broadway. So we okay. just all met in class. And I think it's pretty rare for like a group to stay together yeah. as a troop, like even like this long, like now it's been almost three years, which is wow. crazy. Wow. And we just learned to do that together and it's continued to be fun. And my unsay it release show was kind of this variety show release thing. Um, I had an improv group, like work with me. So I had a guitar. I was also doing stand up. I did stand up for a year and a half, like okay. seriously. Um, like I was going to all the mics. I was getting shows. I was doing 10, 15 minutes. I had to stop because then I was like, I don't have time to do both and I'm going to pick music, but you're never too old to do stand up. Yeah. So leave that on the back burner. But so for unsay, it, the kind of structure of it was that I kind of introduced myself, introduce it. I sang a song. I probably sang your personality sucks. And then they would do um, kind of improv based on the song. Okay. And then we do kind of another iteration of that. And then I did my first, that was my first real show of my first four minutes of stand up. And I did stand up and then kind of did another one. And then um, I also had like a raffle and a prize. I don't know. We did that. And then at the end was 11 PM, which is 
midnight Eastern. So that was like when the song released. So then we all okay. heard the song for the first time together. That's so cool. Which was really cool. That's so special. And that's so cool that you like got to do it with that. Um, have you noticed like your writing change at all since doing musical improv and like studying it? I don't think so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, musical improv to me is leaning so hard on like what I know from music. Like I, it, okay. I feel like music has helped me do musical improv instead of the other way okay. around. Okay. Um, which like when I was doing stand up, like performing so much in music made stand up easier because I was like, mm -hmm. I know what it feels like for people to be silently staring at me. Like that's my comfort zone. So, OK, so I can't honestly say that I feel like comedy has helped music. I feel like music has just helped. That's comedy. so interesting. OK, that, and that's like yeah. a really different perspective on versus like Missy, who is like. Yeah, because you just got to get up there and you just got to do it and figure it out. But it helped her get more comfortable mm. performing. Um, yeah, I guess so. it, it just depends, like, where your comfort zone starts yeah. and then yeah. how each thing informs That's it. That's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I, now I'm, like, really – I really want to see you do stand-up now. <laughs> I'll, I'll find so, a video. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Um, and I need we need to go to another Off-Broadway show. It's been too yes. long. Yes. You're still in Off-Broadway? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, okay, then – uh, I want to talk about the least you could do. If he wanted to, he would. Period. The end. That's the, uh, that's the song. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no, but I did actually really enjoy that one, too. <laughs> um, and then your first song released this year is called New Nashville. Yes. Um, I wish David was here because he's actually a native of Nashville, <gasps> which is rare to find nowadays. Um, and he, I feel like he ha would have a lot of opinions. So, David, when you Dang listen it. to this. Chime in. Chime in. Um, and so you've lived here for about six years. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I've lived here, I think seven, something just, like just that. Just one more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I, I, I live here. I've always lived in Murfreesboro, yeah. not in Nashville, but <clears throat> even so, like we both have seen a lot of changes yeah. just in the short amount of time that we've been here. Um, but you do still, do you still love Nashville? I love it so much. I mm -hmm. cannot get me out. Yeah. Kicking and screaming. My my goal, part of the, I mean, I have a lot of goals, but my goal is just like to be able to continue to grow my career and my path so that I can like live in Nashville proper forever. Mm -hmm. And not that I would, I don't know, maybe if I could have a horse, like maybe I'd go out. Of <laughs> but like, <laughs> but you know, I, I just, I know that Nashville is going to continue to grow and get a little more expensive and I want to be able to keep up. Like I want to be yeah. here so bad. Yeah. We need a public transit system. Yeah. Um, actually anyway. there's a, there, I think that's like on the ballot in November. There's like a thing about that. Really? Okay, I can it share would this make later. Sense. Yeah. It would be, uh, yeah. Follow stand up Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nonprofit. But, it's um, nice but so that song, like when you were writing it, like obviously it's kind of a, you miss what was, mm -hmm. but then also you're still like, but I do still love it at the end of the day. Yeah, I feel like, it, yeah, it felt like a hard needle to thread that we were very conscious of, of like, we want to shout out the venues and the places that are closing or have been in danger of closing, like Exit In didn't close, but it almost did. Right. So, you know, keep it in the song. But we wanted to shout that out, but like the reason why we're here is because we love Nashville. We just don't want the heart of it to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's, what's important. And I feel like, what do you think is causing that? Like all the people moving here? No, no well, the people. move. I mean, yes, there are people from New York and California who are buying up like really expensive places. Like there's no one else that's built for, but you there. Why is this house $3 million next to one story houses? But I don't think that's a problem so much as developers like the developers coming in and jacking up the rent for like Josephine or these place, these buildings, or I think they're knocking live Oak and that whole strip down for apartments. Like that's not people moving here. There's, there's apartments doing deals right now, of like three months rent free. Cause they're empty. Like wow. the, the issue is not people moving here. It's like because of the tourism and everything has exploded the big money is like, oh, we have to capitalize on this. We have to buy up this strip and like take out everything that's iconic about it and then put in something touristy. That's the problem. 
I so wish David was here because I know he would have so much to say about this. Um, but I do want to talk to him about it later and maybe at the next improv show you guys can yeah, t- discuss totally. it. But, uh, that, yeah, that, that's a good point. Like, I've never thought about that. I've never, I like I said, I honestly try to avoid Nashville. I like Nashville's, like, small music local yeah. scene. Um, but, like, Broadway, keep me as far away from there as possible. I mean, possible. no locals are lie. there. Yeah. Um, I had so to go that's... to Broadway the other day because my friends were visiting. And I was like, <gasps> do we have to? And then we went to Miranda Lambert's restaurant. And, I'm so, I still haven't even been there, actually. Like, I know All it is. love I to her. <laughs> but let me just say, I paid $25 for three street tacos that did not fill me up. Ugh. That's all I'm going to say. That's yeah. so true. That's sad, right? That's sad. Yeah. Um... Okay, well, we I lied earlier. We're going to take one last break now. We're going to come back for your show and yell. Okay. We're going to talk about your game. We're going to talk about your new song. Yay! Thank you once again for listening to Successfully Unsigned. I would like to take a moment during this break to remind you to visit our website at su-podcast.com to view all of the newest and latest content that we put out. Also, do us a huge favor and hit like and subscribe on this YouTube video and like and rate us on your favorite streaming platform. Each one of those things helps us out tremendously. We would love to hear your thoughts on what artists we should have on next, what content we should cover, what kind of topics we should discuss, and any tips and tricks you might have in the music industry. Thank you for being one of our favorite listeners and enjoy the rest of the show. We are going to do a little show and yell, a little game. And then we're going to wrap things up and talk about your future as a musician. But first, what is your show and yell <gasps> item? My show and yell item is horseshoe. Woo! Woo! <laughs> this is a little sparkle effect, Bing! too. Um, okay, a horseshoe. So you were just talking about how you'd love to maybe have a horse one day. Um, yes, I was a horse girl. Um, we're not even going to get into that. But this <laughs> is an Easter egg pre-easter egg of um my next song after this song and my next music video okay yes okay so what this horseshoe is it was um a two-year anniversary gift from my first high school boyfriend and you'll see <laughs> there's like little engravings on it i see it's our init- or his initials ts um 4 15 11 our little anniversary date in 2011 um best two years and oh that's actually really sweet he knew i was a horse girly and this was like a horseshoe from like his aunt's farm or anything or something i don't know i actually just re-noticed these like tick marks in the back and they probably mean something i need i need to count them later and i don't remember but this is like one of the most sweet thoughtful um gifts i've ever received Mm -hmm. and um it is in part an inspiration for my next song called boys club, which is about it's, I always have these song ideas that are like kind of heady and it's like, how do you distill this into one thing? But, um, it's basically like the course is like, welcome to the boys club. Just another ex love. I didn't want to give up. And it kind of feels like every breakup is you just like have collected another, Notch in the belt, not because it's just another thing, but it's like another person has a big piece of you and knows everything about you. And now you have all these memories and it's like for that to keep happening. And, you know, I kind of I thought I was going to be the first person to get married out of my friend group. Everybody said that. Mm, And and I had all these really wonderful relationships and they keep ending. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hope your current one doesn't. Yeah. Um. (laughs) So this is really but hey, sweet. That's actually kind of cool with the tick marks. You can play something with that. Yeah. So okay. um, this is going to be in the boys club music video. And uh, do do you have any timeline or can you say any timeline? Um, We're shooting it in October. Oh, my God. There's more writing here. Oh, it just says from. OK, I'm like rediscovering. <laughs> um, We're shooting it in October and I'm going to release the song in the music video before the end of the year. OK, so 2024. OK. Probably November because I can't compete with Christmas. Fair, fair. So, okay, that's really exciting. Oh my goodness, that's thanks. Um, that's a really like interesting, cool concept <laughs> though. Too, I I really like that. And like, yeah, this even though this person from you know ten plus years ago knows so much about you still. So. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, we are going to play a quick game, and then uh, we'll talk about your song that you're going to be performing for us too, which is really exciting. 
Uh, have you ever played Spottle? No. Okay, you're just gonna guess. An art. I'm terrible at explaining games. <laughs> I do this every interview, but basically <clears throat> they take popular artists <clears throat> from Spotify, and you just guess, and then it'll give you clues as to whether you're close or not. The first guess okay. is a complete random guess. So just guess an artist, any okay. artist. Um, Justin Bieber. I said earlier. Good one to start with. <laughs> okay. It is someone who's female whose debut was after sometime after 2009 and they are pop. And it says that it's close to Canadian. So my guess is they're American. I f- why do I feel like it's going to be Billie Eilish? That's actually a really good guess. <laughs> oh, I thought you got oh. it for a sec. <gasps> Okay, Okay, that's really close. (laughs) So yes, female pop solo artist from the US. Their debut is sometime before 2019, close to 2019 though. And they do seem pretty popular. I feel like Tate McRae was after. That would be like my next. I feel like Tate McRae was after, but do you want me to guess that? You get 10 guesses. Just guess Tate McRae. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, she was 2022. Oh, she's That's Canadian. so recent. Oh, oh my God. Okay, mm. fail. Um, wait, do I get a new clue or that's the same? It's, it's the it, same. It's, yeah, it's just <gasps> pop solo artist oh from the U.S. Okay. That's female. Ever, that's everybody. Um, so probably like 2018, 2017, 2016. Somewhere did like anything at those times. I was like only listening to Ariana Grande. Like I wasn't, I don't know who <laughs> else was like making music at that time. Um, I'm going to guess Halsey. She was way before that. It was Halsey. What? what? <laughs> 2017. Wait, she was. 2015 was her debut. Okay. I thought we were talking 2019. It said close to 2019, but sometime so, before then. But I wouldn't consider 2015 necessarily. I was going to say she like chain smokers like closer. Like, that's oh, yeah, yeah. So long ago. I can't. Oh, Damn. Well, I mean. Malsy. Malsy. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> my Mosley. favorite, my favorite video ever. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, it's so funny. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, insert clip of Malsy here, Dale. Google Malsy, yeah. <laughs> Google Malsy. Insert You're the welcome. clip. You you know it. Um, I literally think of her every time I hear that song. <laughs> every time I hear the song, every time like, I'm in a mall. You'll never escape. Yeah. yeah. I love her. Um, okay, so uh you just released a song. From right now, it's three days ago. By the time this comes out, it'll have been a couple weeks. But three days ago, you released Tequila and Lime. Yes. Uh, very exciting. So, like I said, dress up for the occasion. You're going to be singing that. Um, I love the photo shoot with all the little limes and everything. <gasps> Thanks. Um, so, kind of, like, what was the inspiration for that? Yeah. Um, I had a co-write with my friend Taylor, who I wrote it with. And I had a note in my phone. And the all it was was... Um, Shoot to kill time, shoot tequila lime. It was like, is this something? <laughs> that okay. was like all that the original idea was. Okay. And so I remember both of us being kind of intentional about like, I'm like, it's so hard to write upbeat, fun songs. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so easy to write a breakup song. <laughs> it's so hard to write a bop that is, yeah. j- and which is so funny because it's kind of the inverse of like, I love a sad song, but like, there's a lot of times and places where you're like, I don't, I don't have time to like get all on my feet. Like I just need to hear. Yeah. So it's funny that as a listener, you want that so often as a writer, it's so hard to write that. So we were like, we're going to write a fun song. <laughs> going to do it. And we got this chorus, which was awesome. And originally the song, which is my fault, honestly, but it was trying to do too much. We were taking it in too many different directions. Um, and there's actually a version of this probably out on a video somewhere of when we played this at that Michigan gig, because this was the original version of the song that was like, um, like the second verse was like being about kind of with your girls. And then the chorus was a little different. Like it just it was going too many directions. And I actually pitched this to publishers a year ago, like almost exactly today. And <clears throat> They were like, nah, nah, nothing special about it. And to me, I was like, no, I feel like there's something really good about the song. But then when I went to record it, the producer, Frank, who I love, was like, you know, he was like, what's your goal with this? Do you want it to be really commercial? Like, do you just love it as it is? You don't care? Like, what's the vibe? And I was like, no, I want it to be like the most 
summer in your car bop it can be like how do i make it that and he mm-hmm. was like simplify these verses go rewrite them with taylor come back and so we did like only a few months like early summer we rewrote these verses kept all the same melodies rewrote the bridge turned it back into frank and he was like yep nailed it perfect let's do it and it's green perfect for brat summer yeah there exactly you go. it's perfect summer <laughs> Um, okay, so other than, w- I mean, we can expect the new music for yeah. uh, the end of this year. And then is there anything else in the works that you want to talk about? Or any live shows that you've come up? Yeah. Any musical improv? Anything like that? So Tequila and Lime actually will have a visualizer video okay. out in a few weeks. Okay. So I don't have a date, but I'm probably close to the time this comes out or okay. like a week later. So be on the lookout for that. Visualizer video for that. And then... Yeah, for the next song and the next music video out before the end of the year, I am working on another like full length project. Finally, oh, exciting. so another yeah, With some commentary after. I hope. Yes, <laughs> yes, by popular demand. Um, <laughs> and I am hoping to just do a whole lot of shows in the spring okay. and band shows. I really want to get back to doing more band shows. Mm-hmm. That kind of took a backseat to recording and things Mm -hmm. this year um for improv i'm going to be in the third coast improv festival which is in early november it's like three days long and off broadway is has a slot so exciting yeah okay we need to look into going to that get it yeah okay and um yeah so where can people follow you and all the things yeah it's at tegan stewart music what can, can I ask? Like, what's the? Um, I've never heard that name before. Yeah, it's um, it's actually I think it's like an Irish Welsh name, which okay. I'm. My dad's side is English Scottish, but I'm not Irish or Welsh. It's just the name my parents agreed on. Okay. And it does mean beautiful and little poet. So oh, they. Oh, that's cute. Really cute. They manifested that it for you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so go look her up. Uh, go follow her at Off Broadway, uh, Improv. What, yes. Is that, is that the... Off Broadway musical improv, I think, That's is the handle. It is. It's yeah. really long. We follow but... it somewhere. Um, <laughs> and go follow her music. Go watch her music videos. They're on YouTube. Uh, look out for her new music videos. And then, of course, as always, follow us at successfully underscore unsigned at unsigned podcast on TikTok and su-podcast.com. And we will see you guys in the next one. 